Now the third finesse technique that we're going to look at is something that's caught fire over the last 10 years. Uh, Lake Ten Killer would be a great place for this technique. Um, and the, the GRDA chain, the Grand River chain, would be in probably your July, August time frame when the water's at its cleanest and we haven't been getting that much rain. I find that this technique, which is drop shotting, that you need more than three foot of visibility on a regular basis. Ideally, you want five foot or more visibility. On a drop shot rig, basically the presentation is originally designed to be fished vertically, meaning you're not going to cast probably further than 15 feet from the boat, um, more of a vertical presentation. Now the standard rule of thumb is if you do a vertical presentation, meaning just making a short cast, because you can cast a drop shot rig, you, you typically don't want to go above about 18 inches where you place your hook, meaning if my, my hook is, is roughly about that far from the bottom, my weight here, my hook here, and you can allow that, that bait to move in the water column pretty freely. Um, if you're going to cast the drop shot rig at a distance, you want to get to more of a 20, 24 inch, 26, 28 inch variation of that depending on how far you're casting. What that allows you to do is, is it gets your bait further up off the bottom when you make a cast. Um, the purpose of a drop shot rig is to really get that bait up off the bottom a small bait and to allow it to kind of free fall you're able to just keep the weight in place and then just let your line go slack and that small bait will just kind of drift down and then you can kind of shake your rod while it's falling just barely shake your rod and it'll make that bait kind of shake in the water as it falls. We're going to do the finesse style which is this little bitty guy right here and your standard weights. Um, this weight right here is just a typical uh, lead egg sinker, something that you can buy for very cheap at, at Academy or Bass Pro Shops. Um, you can buy these little fancy uh, drop shot setups, and basically they have a little they have a little slit. And what you can do is is you basically just stick your line into the little slot there that they've made and pull down on it, and it's actually just got a little, just basically you're lodging the line into a little gap there and that's all there is to it. I basically just bought the the egg sinker version in lead and I just tie I just tie a regular I, I kinda cheat a little bit I just tie this regular old stupid overhand knot a couple times and that's pretty much it right there that's what I throw and sometimes even to make it simpler on myself depending on what size the line typically typically with this since you're finesse fishing you're using small diameter line so uh, you can actually tie a knot just above the weight uh, literally leaving a knot in the line like that and when you get hung up with the weight it allows you to be able to break that weight off a lot easier without having to sit there and fight it um, what you want to do when you tie the drop shock rig on is I basically do a polymer knot so uh, the, this, this little bitty hook is a little bit more difficult to, uh, to deal with because your eye is so small and you can't, typically you just can't double the line. So you just got to run it through one side, run it back out the other, tie your polymer knot. Now I, I tie the weight on last and the reason for that is, is what you want to do is, let me cut my weight off here keep this hook upright as you can see there it's not it's not an upright motion it's kind of cockeyed to the side because of the way the knots tied in there the end that you're going to tie if this is my end that's going to my rod the end that I'm going to tie my weight onto my what I would call my tag end or my leader end I'm going to take that line and run it back through that same eye I'm going to run it right down th back through on the top side of that hook so it stands up straight. As you can see there's the hook point in my fingertips knowing that that's going to be upright. And what that does is see now the hook stays right, stays correct. It stays pointed out, it keeps your bait like it needs to be and you can either Texas rig, completely rig it onto the hook. Uh, this, this hook is specifically designed 
to be nosed hook. It's a smaller hook. It's a, it's a true drop shot hook. Um, you can use uh, one of the old school offset worm hooks that I was talking about, like a one aught or a two aught, and Texas rig the bait directly to it so the whole bait is on the hook. Or in this case, so the small bait that I'm going to choose, like for, for instance, a uh, bait that I would like for, for this presentation is that <clears throat> the, the Bobby Garland, um, it's actually the Bobby Garland Slab Slayer is what this is. It's, a, it's actually a crappie bait. But it also works really well for drop shot bait. It's three inches long and it's got the biffalo tail on it. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to nose hook just at a small angle and bring that hook right out the front side of that. Right out the front side of that. Uh, so you just got a little bit of the hook sticking out. And as you can see there, now it looks like I've got a, I've basically got a minnow that's swimming around in the water column you could sit there and just shake the rod tip and not move the bait very much and it basically stays in one place and it, it looks like a minnow that's just sitting there dancing around by itself. This is very effective around bridge pilings, brush piles, uh, if you can get right on the edge of a drop off where there's a, a, a ledge type situation uh, on a graph and so by putting that bait in there and just sitting there shaking it if there's any fish around, they're going to come get it. But this is very effective around brush pile and, and, and bridge piling. It's what I call uh, target-oriented structure fishing. Is So basically what we've covered is we've covered uh, the shaky head, um, we've covered the, the, the slip rig, and we've covered our drop shot. And those are our three versions of finesse fishing. Um, all these have their definite place in time. Um, Obviously, with their drop shot, which is what we covered, I would consider that more of an open water type situation. Um, a shaky head is more of uh, just a standard bait that you'd use like a Texas rig. You'd cast it at the bank and drag it around. And you can target fish this too, uh, meaning that you know if there's a lay down, a log lay down, uh, and you can't catch them flipping a, a Texas rig crawdad or or a, a biffle bug that you'd want to fire this up in there and maybe get a few bites that you wouldn't have got or just one bite that you might not have got otherwise. Uh, if it's a tough day, uh, bluebird skies, um, not a lot of wind, you want to stay way out off of the object that you're trying to fish at and just kind of cast this up in there and just kind of really slowly drag it around and shake it on that shaky head. And the slip rig is really the uh, variation of the two. Uh, I, I would deem this as an in-between bait, meaning that you're going to cast at this at the bank, and the shaky head you can draw, dra drag, you know, all the way back out to the boat too. But I feel like this is more effective. My my slip rig is uh, for light line finesse fishing like that because you have this this bait making a lot of movement back here. I feel like you can cover a lot more of the water column and the water with this bait. But these are great finesse techniques, and I hope you get usage out of them and uh, go catch some fish.